Jose Feliciano is on Nyberg. I can't believe this, that you came in the middle of your world tour to stop by and talk to me. Well, uh, why not? I'm, I'm a, a fan. I watch you on the news uh, almost every day when I'm home. And um, when Melissa, my daughter, was just a little baby, I was on your show and you took Melissa in your arms when she was just a baby, so why wouldn't I do the show? Well, that was a hundred years ago, Jose. Well, you just had a birthday. Let's, I did. Let's get it out there. You're 68 years old. I am. Looking 24. Well, and and let's talk about what you're doing now. Over the course of your career, you've been to about 80 countries. You started to play guitar when you were about nine in Puerto Rico, where you were from. No, in New York. In New York. In New York, but. Uh, in Puer when I came from Puerto Rico, prior to that, I learned to play the harmonica, and uh, I used to accompany my uncle on a tin cracker can. He played um, a Puerto Rican instrument called the cuatro, which is like a ten-string guitar. Sure. And I would accompany him, and uh, when we came to New York, I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing. Um, my father tried to get uh, work wherever he could. So, I mean, we were not an opulent family. And uh, maybe that was good in many ways because I think it gave me a tremendous sense, uh, a set of values that I still have to this very day. How did you teach yourself to play the guitar? And, and tell me the story <clears throat> when somebody put a guitar in your hand, what happened? Well. I was nine years old and a friend of my father's brought my first guitar for me. Prior to that, at seven, my father bought me a concertina, which I learned to play. And from seven till about 14, I played the accordion. However, at nine, I learned the guitar to my mother's dismay. <laughs> She didn't like the noise? Well, no, she liked the accordion. Ah. So she wanted, uh, she thought I should continue that. But the guitar just gave me such, when I listened to it, I fell in love with it. It was like a calling. It was like um, meeting this really hot, out of sight chick and falling <laughs> head over heels for her, you know? So That's what happened to me with the guitar. So what did you start to play as a little boy? Well, I didn't do too much. I played the um, Spanish songs that were happening, but I, I taught myself chords like, um, you know, and I learned. And then I started um, just to play the Spanish songs that I learned. And then about at 13, I would play rock and roll, things like. Berry, you know, sure. Johnny Be Good. Um, that you would hear on the radio. And I then... would hear it on the radio and I would copy it. And then as I got older, I would go to Sam Goody's and I'd buy records by Andre Segovia and uh, I would listen to them and I would play whatever I played, I, I listened to rather, I learned right away. And so I taught myself classical guitar. Give me a little classical. Well, things like... Um... <laughs> that kind of thing. When did you know? Now, you were on the Ted Mac Amateur Hour, and that was that was a big deal at some point. Sure, in your I was early, 16. Early, yeah. When and did... I played electric guitar with a jazz group that I started called the Modern Sound Trio. Mm -hmm. And we played jazz instead of, because the piano player liked jazz. He would listen to Billy Taylor and Oscar Peterson. So we mainly played what he wanted to play, which is the reason I think we lost to Ted Mac Amateur. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I enjoyed it. I mean, it was fun. 
we were very dedicated to our band. We'd rehearse wherever we could, and um, we got together at the Lighthouse for the Blind in New York, mm -hmm. and um, the director, who was like my father to me, Maurice Case was his name, and Maurice believed in me from the very beginning. And um, I remember at 16, uh, Duke Ellington came to the Lighthouse to s speak to us kids, and he played the piano, and I played the electric with him. And at 16, I played with Duke Ellington. What else could I? Wow. It was something else. When did you know that maybe this was actually going to be a career for you? Do, do you remember that, a pivotal moment where you thought, well, maybe this is going to work? I never thought of it as a career, and I thought of it as, as a hobby. I never thought of it as a job, although at the age of uh, between 17 and 18, I thought, hey, this is my job, because I would rather do that than, let's say, what the Lighthouse offered me at the time, uh -huh. which was um, making baskets or having a newsstand. And I couldn't see myself doing that. Uh, I thought, well, that's good for other people who are blind, but it's not good for me. And so I pursued, I would, when I was about 17, I'd go to Greenwich Village, and I'd play in the coffee houses, and that's how I got started. So what was that moment when people started to talk about Jose Feliciano? Well, the moment was when I started playing in the village with people like Richie Havens, with people like uh, Bob Dylan. I met Bob at Gertie's Folk City. Um, and I played with some of the folk people, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Um, I didn't play with Joan Baez, but I would have loved to because um, I think Joan Baez was an amazing talent, and she still is. I don't know if she's doing concerts anymore, but she, to me, was a giant in what she did. Recordings, you start to record. At some point, somebody says to you, this is down the road a little bit, you should do that song by the doors. You resisted that, yes? Your manager said, I no, you, 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 you have to do that. I did. Uh, my producer, Rick Girard, insisted that I record Light My Fire because he'd seen me performing it in California at a place called the Golden Bear. And I, I said, Rick, I don't know if I should do this because this was a hit in 1967, and it was 1968. And that spring was when I was starting my album, Feliciano, which had California Dream, and you know, and... Which I recorded because I love the Mamas and Papas. They were one of my favorite groups. Um, I love Mama Cass, I love John Phillips. I loved them all. They were a great group. So I wanted to show them that I like, liked their music. So when I had a chance to record California Dreamin', I took the chance. And so California Dreamin' was released in 1968. That was the A side uh, of our single. But somebody in Seattle took that, saw, uh, took that record and turned it over, and the other side was Light My Fire. And all of a sudden, Light My Fire took off. And I wasn't prepared, I really wasn't. Uh, I wasn't prepared for everything that followed. What followed? Well, uh, Light My Fire became a big hit, and the album Feliciano was a big hit. I have to thank RCA Records at the time for signing me. I was only 19 at the time. Wow. And uh, I was nervous as hell. I really was. So um, it takes off, and you're thinking, now are, are offers I starting said, now to come? Now what the hell am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Light My Fire, yes. you played a, a million and a half times yep. in your career.
Yeah. What keeps it fresh for you, and how do you change it up so that, you know, I've, I've, I've seen you with Carlos Santana and Ricky Martin played on the stage, and, and that's one of my favorite recordings, uh -huh. just seeing that, that hearing, uh, seeing well, that and hearing it. But what keeps that fresh for you? Well, uh, what keeps it fresh is that people still like for me to sing it. No, they and, love for you to sing it, yeah, actually. And so, for me, it was a hit record for me, and I can't be... Uh, you know, I can't be ungrateful. I have to always say to myself, Jose, you have to sing it. The public expects it. You got to do it. So I do, and, uh, and I love the song. Even though I didn't write it, I know I did something different to it that the Doors didn't do, and so I'm grateful for that. Well, uh, we're going to talk again, but I'm going to ask you to do it now, and do it, do it Jose's way, however that is. Well, it goes up. gets old even though I'm sure it does for you sometimes it's such a beautiful melody and you're playing with a with a guitar from Argentina you said? yes yes I was in Argentina a few years ago and uh, this these uh, people who make these guitars gave me this guitar so uh, I love it because it's very light and um, I don't have to use my stage guitars which I love but this is a welcome little thing. It's very fragile sounding and it's I beautiful. love it. Beautiful. So, so six Grammys. I think you have 16 nominations. I have nine Grammys. You have nine Grammys. Yeah. I've, I've got to do my homework better. <laughs> so nine Grammys, yeah. a ton of nominations. Sure. You're in the, the Latin Hall of Fame. Yep. Now Plus I'm in the Latin Songwriters Hall of Fame. Okay, so let's, yeah. just, let's just number all of these. Now the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in this country. You need to be in that. I would love to be in it. Um, one, because I think doing a rock and roll song with a nylon string guitar is a first. You know, it's kind of like, well, maybe it's a bad comparison, but it's like Jackie Robinson breaking into the major leagues. Nobody who's a rock musician ever used a nylon guitar on a on a rock and roll song, and I did. So, I had the um, the audacity. I always <laughs> say to do something like that, and so I'm very proud of it. And um, I'd love to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I love rock and roll, and I'd like to be in there with people like Little Richard and Richie Valens and all of those great rock and roll uh, people that I admired. As well you should be. So you're in the middle of a world tour and you're all over the place. You're going to the UK, you're going to Chile. Actually I went to the UK. Yes. And I had, I did uh, eight shows, two shows a night for four nights and they were all sold out. Of course. Well, let's see, you're different than me, Anne. I don't, <laughs> I don't take things like that for granted. I was surprised and delighted that we sold out. But see, I've, ne I've never been the kind of artist that expects to be sold out all the time. Uh, sometimes that doesn't happen. And it's happened to me in my career. But when the concert sold out, I'm surprised and I'm grateful and happy. 
Who have you not played with? You mentioned um, a few people, but who have you not played with? You you played with have you played with Paul McCartney? I think you have. Yes. Uh, no, I've never played. Okay, with so Paul. we want to play with Paul. I would like Paul. to. I would okay, like so to. Okay, so let's get that. Who else would um, you like to play with? I, well, I played with John Lennon on an album. I played with Carlos Santana. I performed with Glenn Campbell, whom I love very much, um, and I'm hoping that Glenn is, uh, you know, Glenn has Alzheimer's. Yes. And I'm hoping that uh, that he at least uh, stays stable. He's still touring, and uh, I love Glenn. We played together on a special that uh, that I had in 1969. Andy Williams was a good friend of mine um, who recently died. Uh, so I played with a few people. Uh, I jammed with Stevie Wonder once. I've never recorded with him, but... Uh, there's still time. There's still time. Who of the young kids, if you will, do you admire? Are the John Mayers, perhaps? I mean, who do you, who do you love that are, are the newer kids? I like kids Usher. The really? I think Usher is a very talented... Um, Individual, I think Justin Tim Timberlake is uh, very talented. Uh, I think John Mayer is talented. Uh, he is a good writer, and I like what he does. Who else that's playing the guitar these days that you, that you like, that, of the young kids? Well, I like Van Halen on the electric guitar, mm -hmm. and I used to love uh, Jimi Hendrix, and I still do. Uh, I think Jimi Hendrix is somebody to be reckoned with and Van Halen is somebody to be reckoned with uh, so I think you know there's a lot of great great talent around now you're writing some music right now yeah uh, are we releasing new albums you know plug everything tell, tell me what well, you're doing uh, and what I'm starting to do is put my music on the internet because record companies don't exist anymore really it's true and so um, I've been trying to get my wife Susan? My, yeah, my wife Susan, uh, to put my stuff on the internet. You know, it's a strange thing. Yes. Maybe I should have Susan tell you how we met. Um, well, you can tell me. Well, I mean, okay. You have the camera on but you. But she, you know, she tells the story better than me. And you have three children, we I should say. I have three children with Susan. Um, but, um, you know, when I did my version of the Star Spangled Banner in 1968, uh, Susan came to my defense. She started my fan club when she was 14, and then I met her when she was 17. Actually, I met her when she was six, 16, and I was doing a concert in Jersey, and she came backstage and she said, hi, I'm Susan. And I said, Susan, how old are you? She said, I'm 16. I said, oh, jailbait. <laughs> and she didn't know what jailbait was, so she asked her mother, and I don't think her mother ever told her, she just like, smiled, you know, and then I met Susan when she was 17. Mm -hmm. I was doing a, an engagement in Detroit at the Fisher Theater, uh -huh. and I met her, and uh, I, though I was married at the time, uh, my marriage was not really uh, the best, and it wasn't really working out. So Susan was a real relief for me in that sense, and, and um, we got together. And we've been together ever since. Did you ever write a, a song for Susan? I did. Well, let's hear a little bit of it. It's called, um, Believe Me When I Tell You. It goes, Believe me when I tell you That I can't think No, I'm sorry. Believe me when I tell you That I can't live without your love another minute That my life just no good without you in it you believe me, believe me when I tell you, and it goes on from there. It, that's, it's a lovely melody. Yeah. Now, what, what have you taught? What have you given to other people who are blind? What, what do you think your legacy is going to be? Because you don't stop, well, which is awesome. You said, you know, you, you were at the lighthouse and they wanted you to do certain things, and you, you said, no, I've got a talent. I'm going to go do something. Yeah. So what's your, what's your legacy? Well... I hope my legacy is that I promote total independence for blind people. Um, I think that our government doesn't do enough to further that independence. 
For example, um, America denies us blind people uh, our currency, and you know they don't help with uh, the money. As a matter of fact, when I used to go on the road, Susan would braille my money for me, and people used to say, you know, if you get caught doing that, you could go to jail. And I used to say, well, I don't give a, a hoot, <laughs> you know? Uh, I'm, I want you to braille my money so I know what I have. Mm -hmm. But I really think the government has fallen very short in helping us. Um, I have a computer, a braille computer called the Braille Note, which I use. Uh, but I think we need to have the currency thing. I also think that labels on pharmaceutical products you know, should um, sure. should have braille labels. In other words, everything that sighted people take for granted, we don't have. We really, I mean, I can't go into a grocery store and look at a can and know what the product is, mm -hmm. know what it contains, because nobody thinks of making braille labels. And the other thing is that f flying for people like me is getting difficult because when you're on a plane, now everything is done by touch screen. So I can't choose what movie I'd like to see unless I have somebody with me, which I'm very fortunate that I have that. But you're talking about everybody else who yeah, doesn't. Yeah, exactly. Well, we have to work on that, and, and you do in your spare time. I try to. In the interest of, of time, because I could talk to you for hours. Well, me too. <laughs> me too, because um, I'm so happy to see well, you. Well, me too, Jose. And I love you. I want to well, say you're that. You're so cute. <laughs> no, I do. I love you, and I can see why your husband loves you too. Well, thank you. I'll remind you <laughs> of that. But, but uh, two, two things before we go. I, I have to hear a little Chico and the man. Sorry. Sure, sure. And then And then I want you to play whatever you want to play us out. Well, okay. Uh, I'll play Chico for a little okay. bit. Chico, don't be discouraged. The man, he ain't so hard to understand. I said, Chico, if you try now, I know that you could lend a helping hand. See the morning sun if you try it, and I know things will be better. I know they will for Chico and the man. Yes, they will for Chico and the man. Thank you so much. Thank now, you. I want you to play one more song, anything you want. This is going to play us out. Thank you so much for coming okay. on. Okay. Well, how about if I play you a little bit of the new song that I wrote? Sure. It's called It Makes Me Angry. And you need to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, I'm just thank saying. you. Thank you. Okay, so play us out. Why should it be that in a country as rich as ours? We can't take care of the people We can't take care of the sick Why should it be That we can send our sons and daughters Off to war You know we've done that before And don't you know that it to find a solution Why should it be that we should have to pay for health care when Congress gets theirs for free paid for by you and me I pray every day that peace 
come our way And we can all live as brothers We can love one another Don't you know that it makes me feel so angry Don't you know that it We got to find a solution.